Hello everyone, congratulations on completing the first quarter of the course. Next up, we'll be going over what is my personal favorite topic in the class and something that is also super useful in future classes, especially if you're doing any natural language processing. In fact, this section is why that class lists hours as a prerequisite. If you've watched Jake's videos, you should already know the basics of how it works. So I'll be going over an example of how we can use those concepts and go about something similar to the current homework. And let's get started. The solutions in this part of the course will have four sections. A table definition where you describe what the elements of your table that you're using are. A record installation where you talk about the base case and how you recur on the base case to build up the elements of your table. And then you build out an algorithm um, using these two sections and write it out using pseudocode, accounting for all possible edge cases. And lastly, you analyze the running time of, of your algorithm. Here is an example. You are given an array and asked to return the maximum contiguous subsequence. Essentially, elements such that they don't have any gaps between them, and their sum is the maximum out of all such possible combination of elements. As mentioned, you will first need to define a table, usually defined with the variable name t. Most of your tables will be in one or two dimensions, but I have seen questions that needed three-dimensional tables as well, and you may need more. The way I go about coming up with these is pretty intuitive. Count the number of variables that you need to keep track of. Here you just have one that you're concerned with, that is the maximum contiguous sum. But you may have cases, for example, in the change making problems, we have to keep track of the value, the type of denominations, and the number of denominations for each value. And that's three variables right there. While more variables may seem intimidating, they're really just things like the question ask you to keep track of and use in your bottom up build up of your solution. And now for the record installation, you define the base cases. Here it is just the first element since the maximum sum having exactly one element is going to be the element itself. You might have entire rows and columns rolled out as base cases too for different questions. It'll, it'll, it's dependent on the question. The, recurren the recurrence relation builds up your table from these base cases. Here you know that for a contiguous subsequence of size greater than one, you can either choose to add the element to the subsequence that you already have or not and use it to start another one. This is a pretty common condition in, in this section of the course where you have to come up with conditions to check whether you would like to choose an element and include it in your solution or not since you are having a bottom-up build-up. With that, you have most of your work already done. All that is left is to organize it into an algorithm in the form of a pseudocode solution. Just declare some variables, add the base case, recurrence, and a way to return the answer while keeping track of the edge cases as well. Make sure to not have negative indices and that your pseudocode is language and agnostic and doesn't use um, tricks in some particular language that might not apply to a general solution. And also make sure that you don't use memorization or some other technique that is not talked about in the class. The last part of your solution should have the runtime analysis. There should be something you are already familiar with from the previous section of the class. My code had three non-nested iterations of size n and another loop that is bounded by size n, effectively resulting in a runtime of big O of n where n is the size of the array. And this should be enough to start everyone off on homework too. Um, let us know if you have any questions on Piazza. We have four different posts uh, tagged for each question, and we'd be happy to help out. Good luck.